Crowds have been cheering Ukrainian soldiers in Kherson as they entered the city for the first time since it was captured by Russia at the start of the war. President Zelensky has called it a historic day, but he also said the city was not entirely cleared of the enemy's presence. Russia's retreat has been fast. It says they've pulled 30,000 soldiers out of Kherson. It's one of the biggest setbacks since President Putin launched the invasion of Ukraine in February. The Russian troops have retreated to new positions on the east bank of the river Dnipro. Many of them escaped across the Antonovsky Bridge. That's the main road heading east before a section of it was blown up, apparently by the Russians, to protect their retreating forces. Our international editor, Jeremy Bowen, is in southern Ukraine and he's been looking through the first pictures coming out of Kherson as the Russians abandoned it. <laughs> Kherson's residents emerged from their homes as the first Ukrainian soldiers reached the main square. For them, it's the end of more than eight months under occupation. Plenty to celebrate, but they are not out of danger. Russia's guns are only a few miles away across the river. As they left, Russian engineers blew a section of the Antonovsky Bridge over the Dnipro. At dawn, long lines of Russian troops seem to be using a temporary crossing under the main damaged structure. The Russian claim is that 30,000 soldiers and more than 5,000 pieces of equipment left Kherson before the bridges were blown. The Ukrainian forces pushed forward. The final Russian departure happened much faster than anyone expected. We received these pictures from a special forces unit, taken as they poked around a camp the Russians had abandoned. Here at least this retreat looks better organized than some of Russia's others in Ukraine. That's because apart from a few dozen shells, most of what they left was rubbish. And not equipment Ukraine can use against them. President Zelensky told Ukrainians that this was an historic day. They were taking their country back. The people of Kherson kept the Liberation Party going. What's happened deepens the Ukrainian conviction that they can beat Russia. Ukrainians can celebrate tonight. There'll be harder times ahead. We can speak to Jeremy, who's in Odessa in the south of the country. And Jeremy, where does this now leave Ukraine? Well, as you've seen, celebrating tonight, but with some challenges. The extent of the Ukrainian victory, the reason why they're so pleased, can be seen by the extent of their defeat eight months ago, because the Russians were hoping to use Kherson to advance along the Black Sea coast, perhaps as far as where I am, Odessa. And the fact that they're not able to do that means that this place, this stretch of the coast now feels a lot more secure than it did. Now, the Russians might be able to extract some positives from this very serious setback. If what they say is true, if they've managed to bring so many forces and so many weapons back across the river, then they are, they are in a position in their, in their new fortifications to bombard the Ukrainians on this side of the river. And as well as that, defending Kherson and the pocket around it, the bridgehead, meant that the Russians had to keep a lot of troops there. Now, those troops might be free to go elsewhere to other battlefields, and that would put pressure on the Ukrainians. Jeremy, thank you. Jeremy Bowen there reporting from Ukraine. Let's speak now to our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg, who's in Moscow. And Steve, how much of a blow is all this for President Putin? Not so much of a blow, if you believe what Moscow is saying. Russian officials are not calling this a retreat. They're calling it a redeployment, a manoeuvre, trying to play things down a little bit. But that does not alter the fact that this was a withdrawal from the only Ukrainian provincial capital that the Russians managed to capture since February. And it came just a few weeks after President Putin had declared that Kherson had become part of Russia forever. So, yes, this is embarrassing, I think, for Vladimir Putin. It is a blow to the Russian president, which is probably why the Kremlin has been trying to distance him 
from the decision to retreat because it knows that the pullback will be seen as a setback by many people in Russia. It doesn't want the president taking the flak. That is why the Russian generals had to go on television earlier this week. It was left to them to announce this withdrawal to the Russian people. But at the end of the day, who is the commander-in-chief in Russia? It is Vladimir Putin. Whose idea was it to invade Ukraine? Vladimir Putin. So it's hard to imagine that at some point Vladimir Putin won't be caught up in the consequences of and the fallout from this war, whatever they may be.